I live in southern Ohio, near the Ohio River. A few friends and I decided to go explore an abandoned hospital which backs up to a giant hill in a large forest across the river in Maysville, Kentucky. It was a local spot for dumb teenagers to go and scare each other or make out with their girlfriends. You could tell if there were other people there since there would be cars parked near it. On this night, however, we were the only teenagers there, but the moment we got out of the car, everything felt wrong. We knew we weren't supposed to be there because the building was condemned, but it felt different though. By this time, I'd been to Hayeswood Hospital 20 times or so and was familiar with the layout. Once the three of us had gotten inside, we were there about 45 minutes before we split up to tag some different places and uh, explore. I went to go take pictures of the morgue in the basement and to see if I could photograph any orbs or anything really cool. I'd been in the morgue for about 10 minutes when I smelled the foulest odor I've ever smelled. It was rot. I don't know what it was that was rotten. I imagine it was a large dog or a coyote, but all I could make out was it was about 40 pounds of rotten meat. So I just started to look at the meat chunk when I heard the slam of a steel door. And what sounded like running through puddles of water. This meant whatever it was, it was in the basement with me because the floor had about three inches of water standing in it. So naturally, I figured it was my friends playing a prank on me. That was when I decided to get them back and scare them before they could scare me. Now, the way the morgue was set up, you could actually climb on top of the coolers they used to store the bodies in. So, I hopped up there and lay in wait to scare the mess out of my friends. I had been there no more than a minute when I heard screaming. Now, I've known my friends my entire life, which at this point had been 19 years, but I had never heard screaming like this. Then the screaming stopped and I heard hard footsteps running above me and what I can best describe as pounding. Now I'd be lying if I said I wasn't freaking out a little because this wasn't like my friends. It was usually hide behind a corner and jump out and go gotcha. But this was different. This was dread I was starting to feel. As I continued to lie there, about five minutes passed when I heard panting and footsteps in the water. They were getting closer. That was when I smelled wet dog. But it wasn't just wet dog I was smelling. I was smelling that same smell of rot too. Then another steel door slammed and I could tell it was the same door I had passed before I had got to the morgue door. The panting was even louder now. And honestly, it sounded more like a labored breathing and sniffing. Now at this point I was terrified. I tried to slowly back away from the edge of the cooler I was on so I could 
slip behind the wall the cooler backs up to and drop into the boiler room. I was almost to the end of the cooler when I heard the morgue door slam open and break the tiles on the wall with the door handle. I was less than 35 feet from whatever was panting and smelling like death. And all I could do was think, run, run, run. I could hear sniffing. And then I heard the deepest, most menacing growl I've ever heard. The movies and shows don't do justice to just how deep and rough a growl of this size sounds. It was sniffing me out. It was actually smelling where I had been. I dropped down behind the wall in the boiler room. I thanked God the door that connected the morgue was blocked with old gurneys and a locker on its side, which I thought would stop this thing from getting in. But I was wrong, so very wrong. I hadn't been in the boiler room 30 seconds before I heard the pounding and scratching on the steel door. It sounded like Freddy Krueger was trying to carve his way through the steel door. Then I heard the sound that still haunts me to this day. It howled, and I mean it bellowed a howl so loud, I had to cover my ears. Now on the other side of the boiler room was the access to the generator and the dock doors that trucks used to unload things near the hillside that led to the woods. When I reached the other side of the room, I could hear this thing slamming into the door and knocking the lockers away and the gurneys. I opened the door to the dock room and when I looked back, I saw the arm of this creature sticking through the opening it had made, and it was like a horror movie. It was a gray and brown mass of fur. It looked like a human arm, but it wasn't because the hand was all wrong. The hand had five digits, but the claws would have made a bear run in fear the door behind me and ran for the dock doors, but the dock doors wouldn't budge, and I could hear the gurneys overturning and the lockers overturning and the lockers sliding on the floor. It was getting through, and the only thing between me and it was a single door. I ran to one of the windows by the dock doors and proceeded to bust it open which mangled my hand from the glass. Then as I was pulling myself through the window, I heard the door get slammed into it. And one of the hinges completely flew off the door and hit the wall. I tumbled out of the window and hit the cold, wet ground. Then I stood up and saw it in the doorway. Now I'm six foot four, 250 pounds. Not little by any means. And this thing took up the entire doorway. An eight foot tall, three foot wide door. It was covered head to toe in gray fur. It had a very narrow snout, almost like a Doberman Pinscher. And its ears were just barely visible because of the doorway. But I could tell they were pointing up just like a dog. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was completely paralyzed. This thing was staring right into my soul. Then it snarled. And that woke me from my disbelief of what I was seeing. I turned and ran. I ran up the hill into the woods to get around the hospital to get back to the street where the car was parked. I hadn't made it 25 feet when I heard it clawing to get out of the window. I knew I would never make it to the car this way, 
So I ran back towards the hospital where the fire escape ladder was. I had used the ladder before to climb to the roof to take pictures of the entire town. I completely skipped the first three rungs on the ladder and was now inside the enclosed part of the fire escape. Again, this thing howled and I could feel waves of pure terror filling my body. My hand was killing me at this point and I was getting blood on everything. Just as I reached the first floor window I could climb into, this thing slammed into the fire escape ladder, which knocked me down a couple of rungs. It leaped onto the outside of the fire escape and began clawing at my feet. Just as I reached the window, I felt it. Pain like nothing I've ever felt. It had grabbed just above my ankle and yanked. And in doing so, shredded my boot at the end of my jeans and into my flesh. I was able to pull myself into the first floor window and I heard it push itself off the fire escape and head back the way it had come. Now I was dragging my left leg and trying to keep my right hand in my hoodie pocket. The entrance we came in from was only about 150 feet away down the main hall and around a left turn. Around halfway down the hall, I heard the steel door slamming again. I dragged myself down the hall, just trying to stay focused on getting out of this hell hole. Then the howling started again, and I could hear it getting closer. I made the turn and heard the pounding coming up the stairs from the basement. I made it to the entrance and I heard the padding of hands and feet on the floor. I made the mistake of looking back just as it rounded the corner and it was running on all fours like a real dog. I bolted down the hill towards the street where the car was parked and realized the car was gone. They had left me. My only way of escape was gone. So I just zoned out and kept running down the hill. My leg was throbbing. My hand was in agony and all I could think was I'm going to be dog kibble. Finally, I made it to the first house I could find and ran full force into the door and began pounding on it like a crazy person. Thank God this little old lady was home because she opened the door and I literally fell inside. Just before I kicked the door closed, Standing up on two legs at the end of her driveway was this monster. I broke down into tears. I didn't know what to do. Luckily, the old lady had called the cops because a crazy person who was bleeding everywhere just fell into her home. When the cops got there and asked me what had happened, I told them the same thing I've said here. Of course, they didn't believe me and thought I was on drugs. The EMTs took me to the hospital. And when they did the blood work and found no substance in my system, they then concluded I was attacked by a wild dog. I ended up with 36 stitches in my leg and 17 in my hand. I had to get rabies shots and tell the local wildlife officer my story. He informed me that they had had reports of wild dog packs running around the outside of town, ransacking garbage cans, and killing some of the local pets. I informed him that it wasn't a pack of wild dogs. 
but he was a dog man. But they all just thought I was crazy. The only thing I had in my favor was the claw mark on my left leg. Even the doctors were confused about how a wild dog could make a mark like that. Now you know my story and know why I absolutely know we are not at the top of the food chain. I've never been back to Hayeswood Hospital and I've deterred anyone from ever going there. That experience has haunted me for the last 11 years of my life and it has made me into the overcautious man I am. I always have to know where every exit is when I walk into a building and I always know where large clumps of woods are. This experience changed me forever and it changed the way I look at the world we live in. Just because we all haven't seen something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just means some people haven't been hunted for their life. I have no doubt that what stalked me that night was the dog man. I know it in my bones.